My guest today is Rebecca Campbell, a music industry entrepreneur. She founded Scorpio Music in 2002. Her newest business is redefining an industry. The business is Posse.com and it's the world's first fan-driven peer-to-peer music marketing platform. Rebecca Wolgan. Hi, thank you for having me. Tell us about Posse.com. So Posse is a site where um, fans of an artist or an event can go to Posse and they can actually get tools or links to promote that event to their friends through Facebook or Twitter or their own blogs. And then when their friends click through and buy the tickets, they get rewarded through commissions or prizes or other rewards. So you're creating um, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs. Yeah, exactly. And it, it um, basically redistributes advertising. So as a music promoter, instead of spending money advertising um, in the newspaper or in putting up posters on the street, you um, transfer that money to offer commissions to fans to go out and actively promote that event to their friends. So the music industry has been around a long time, traditionally would do bill posters, big ads. Now we're seeing that money go into paying commissions for a sales force using very unconventional tools to promote music to their friends. Yeah, well everybody knows, I mean, there's a lot of research out there that shows that 82% of people find out about events online through friends and family only 2% through print advertising, but yet promoters you know, spend about 80% of their budgets on, on print and posters, so it kind of makes sense that someone would at some stage create a system to encourage word of mouth. The system, which is one that you've created, um, seems to have hit a spark. Not only have you got a lot of people signing up to sell tickets, but also you've had some very impressive people come on board to back the business financially. What was it about this model, which uses very contemporary tools and the movement of using the crowd as part of your business, what was illuminated to these investors by you that had them say, yes, I'm going to invest in this company? Um, I think people could identify with the problem of you know where the business came from. Now there's a, quite a clear problem um, of you know, advertising having less and less impact to Generation Y, and people are noticing that when they're right. you know trying to reach that generation to sell them things, they know that they don't you know they don't read email newsletters anymore, they don't listen to the radio, they don't pay attention to advertising. <laughs> they do pay attention to what their friends say on Facebook and Twitter, and and they read blogs. So like. Um, I think you know when people saw that this was a way of a, of encouraging people to spread the word about a particular thing, and that you know advertising could be spent getting people to promote that particular thing, whether it be an event. But I think that um it just made a lot of sense. And then also the business model has some really good features, like it's very scalable. You know it really requires um you know it's a it, there's no manual kind of work in the process in the business process and also it can be applied to other product verticals. So yeah, it works well in music, but it can also be applied to fashion or to travel or to all sorts of things. And also it's unique, it's never been done before. So I think that's exciting for people, you know. There's a lot of um, businesses start in Australia that are replicas of things that have been successful right. overseas and they'll do really well, but I think the idea of it being a unique um, and compelling business model created in Australia is was something that people were excited to be involved in. Mm, and obviously you'll roll out internationally and I suspect that that's where the bulk of the business will be. Yeah, internationally. yeah at the moment we're kind of just we're testing out the model in Australia and getting you know getting the platform right and the branding right and we launch we've just hired our first person in the UK and so we go live in the UK on the 9th of May. That's very exciting. Yeah. I want to talk about your sales force because unlike traditional business that might have a large sales force and a whole lot of overhead, you have almost a volunteer uh, sales force. But how do you engage them? How do you keep them on fire and interested in doing business? So um, fans are signed up to our site to promote music, but they generally sign up to promote a particular artist or a particular festival or they're very passionate about one thing. So. For them, it's um, it's partially about being rewarded. So, like they want to feel like you know they're not they're actually getting something back for all the work that they do promoting an event, but also it's actually being able to make a difference. So, if it's an if it's an artist that they're passionate about, it's one thing to kind of be a fan and follow them on Twitter or or um, you know be a friend on MySpace, but to actually be able to take part in the business of that artist and make a difference, you know, feel like they're making a difference, it's very compelling for um, for music fans. And then they also we reward people by, you know, we offer things like, you know, win a backstage pass if you're the highest selling mm. fan in the town or or if you bring 
you know, if you sell four tickets, you get a ticket into sound check and things like that. And, you know, keep people really interested and make them feel like they're a part of, like they're really I, a real part of it. I think for even if people watching can translate it to their own business, it's finding those ways where the customer feels rewarded and wants to contribute to your business and you've Definitely. certainly done that and I imagine there's a, a little bit of celebrity in being able to represent my favourite artist yeah, exactly. by being part of their team as they come to my town. It's very, yeah. very exciting. Yeah, or a festival, you know, if you go to a festival you can promote, some of our tickets are also cheaper so if right. you're part of our group you can promote tickets to your friends and those tickets are cheaper than their friends could get just by going directly yeah. so they feel like they're really offering their friends something. Now you've been growing the business um, through bringing in investors, it's one of the things you're doing. What do you look for when you look to bring in a partner who is an investor? Um, we look for people who are going to fit in with the existing shareholder group, I guess, and you know, it has the same vision for the business. You, I guess you want all your investors to you know, be kind of there for the same reasons that you, know, you are, that you have a big vision for the business and that you want to go international. It's not necessarily something that's going to happen in six months, but you know, it's, um, we're all quite ambitious. And I guess um, we really also look for people who can add something so most of the investors on our register um, have from a technology background or from okay. a music industry background or from um, you know, sales or investment, you know, VC world. So we look for people who you know, I can call up from time to time. You know, I've got an IP lawyer who's been helpful in advising and patents. And so yeah, it's, it's really, when you have a you know, startup and you have a small management team, it's really good to have a great kind of base of investors you can call on to to give advice. Hmm. I do want to talk about another side of you and that is that I understand that you are quite passionate about the areas of social justice, about working to relieve poverty and in development. Tell us about your interest in those areas. Um, it's just, I guess that's kind of just me, it's something I've, you know, that's kind of the core of who I am. I've been interested in, in getting involved and in working on different issues since I was very young. The first thing I did was when I was 19 I organised a concert to raise awareness of um, youth suicide problem in my hometown of Wellington and that was a massive event that kind of got me started on the music industry career but um yeah I guess um, I kind of see business like I love business and that's it's kind of my fun but what I do is I like to you know I like to make a difference so the things I'm involved in is um I was involved in you know I was one of the initial inv advisors to the Global Poverty Project mm -hmm. and they are an amazing organization where they deliver, um, it's kind of like an inconvenient truth, mm. but it's about um, the issue of world poverty and kind of raising awareness about what we can all do to make a difference. And so that's now launched in the UK and they've just launched in the US as well and have taken the presentation, which only started about a year and a half ago, to over 300,000 people. Oh, that's great. So yeah, they're amazing. Um, I work with the Oak Tree Foundation, who are, um, are also really amazing. Everybody involved in the organisation on a day-to-day -day basis is age 25 or under and they're about Australian youth empowering youth in developing countries through educational projects. Oh, that's great. So yeah I'm really, my areas of real interest are education so raising awareness of um, what people can do to make a difference and, and um, you know um, contributing to education and then also kind of political um, advocacy. Mm. And well, and then the more uh, successful that your commercial ventures are, the more you can obviously contribute to some yeah. of those other areas. That's the idea. So <laughs> it's really what I do it for, I guess. <laughs> it's very, yeah, very inspiring. Um, for those of us uh, who are watching, who are perhaps are new to business, um, what lessons would you share with us about growing a business? Um, I can only kind of share my lessons because I watch people do it differently to me and think, wow, they've done it really well, I wish I'd done that. But, <laughs> but, um, but then I'm also I'm on a different path. So my, my advice, I guess, is always dream really big. So I always go for something really ambitious, you know, um, and then f just follow through and make small, make a big plan and then break it down. And then day by day, just follow through on everything and you'll get there. So they're the kind of two things that I really try and stick to just at the beginning just you know you've got to do this this and this just actually getting it done and um, and, and another piece of advice I've noticed is um, if you think there's a problem there's always a problem 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed, like, you think, oh, maybe that's a problem. And then you think, oh, maybe we'll and it's like, no, that was a problem. So, so pay attention. It's always a problem. Okay. So if you think there's a problem, there's a problem, you've got to address it straight away. And um, and a piece of advice I read that someone else said, Barack Obama actually said the best piece of advice he'd had was to take long periods of time to be by yourself and to think. And I thought, well, that's really good advice. So I often will go away on holiday by myself or I'll go, you know, just away for a weekend and go for big long walks and that's when you're always your most creative and you get um, just insights that you don't get you know, when you're constantly in the, in the thick of things. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Oh, thank you. Thank you.